what is up everyone and welcome back to the channel now today we're gonna take a look at something quite interesting that i don't get to ride quite that often here in romania so here we have scooters we have motorcycles and that's about it but there's also another style of two-wheeled vehicle and that is the cub pioneered by honda somewhere in the 50s and 60s with the famous honda cub and now it has been made just about by everybody so what is a cub well a cub is a 125cc motorcycle with a four-speed transmission and an automatic clutch as you can see here there is no clutch lever so it has a manual transmission but an automatic clutch now why do some people prefer this basically you have full control of the vehicle with your left hand being free to do whatever to carry stuff in your left hand while you operate the vehicle with your right hand and both your legs now normally this type of system was first made so in asia noodle couriers could deliver hot noodles to customers without spilling them so instead of putting them in a box on the back and spilling everything in the box because of the bumps and the bumpy roads they could hold them in their left hand because it is said that the best dampener is your hand so they could carry their packages in their hand without spilling anything without the packages feeling any kind of bumps because suspended in the hand it would be much better but this is quite an interesting little machine and it has although i see a lot of drawbacks compared to a scooter 125cc scooter it does have a couple of advantages so today we're going to explore the world of the cub and uh, first of all we're going to take a look at it from front wheel to back wheel like we usually do and then we're going to take it for a bit of a ride and see exactly what's what with a cub come on let's get into it all right first of all we are taking a look today at the daytona motors dy 125 rs this is a 125 actually a 120 cc cub with an 8.2 horsepower engine, a four-speed gearbox. And the advantages of a cub is that, yeah, it's cheaply made, but that's because it's very cheap to buy. Uh, this one is around 2,000 euros, depending on your market. So compared to other scooters or 125cc motorcycles, it's about 60% or 70% of the price and uh, it's no slouch because it weighs just a hundred kilograms so even it even if it does have just eight horsepower it weighs just a hundred kilograms so it's much lighter than 125cc scooters or motorcycles but let's get into it so first of all up top we have two led strips around the indicators for daytime running lights we have a high and low beam halogen light and we have our indicators which are led moving down we have fairing to protect our legs from the elements we have a big 17 inch wheel but on a skinny little tire we have a dual piston caliper up front on a 240 millimeter brake disc uh, it does not have abs but it does have a combined braking system so when you brake just the back wheel it also acts on the front wheel Moving around to the side, we have our back brake, we have our engine and gearbox, we have a kickstart, just in case the battery fails, you can kickstart the thing to life. You have your passenger foot pegs, that also, both the passenger foot pegs and the rider's foot pegs have a lot of rubber on them to be comfortable for long sessions of riding. A nice long seat, narrow seat, and also very low, so this is perfect for really really short riders and a small luggage rack on the back and the exhaust the back wheel is also a 17 inch wheel with a dual piston caliper and a 190 millimeter brake disc on the back moving to the back of the cub we have all halogen lights on the back we also have a chain drive with a very skinny little chain, but you don't need a big chain for, uh, chain for eight horsepower. We have a center stand, we have a kick, we have a kickstand, we have our gearbox, and the thing about the gearbox is that unlike a regular motorcycle, to go up the gears, you just push down on it, 
and to come back down the gears you push on the back of it or you pull up with your with the front of your leg it's a bit weird in the way that it acts but i'll get into more details as we ride it we also have here a keyhole and that is to open the seat where we have the fuel tank and a very very small storage the fuel tank is three and a half liters in volume now th that may not seem like a lot but this thing uses less than two liters per 100 kilometers so actually the fuel tank can get you almost 200 kilometers of range with just three and a half liters so that's pretty amazing moving around to the dashboard we have our keyhole we have our front brake lever our engine start button it is it does have an electric start besides the kick starter it's also fuel injected we have on the dash a fuel gauge a gear position indicator indicator lights high beam light engine check engine light and a speedometer and an odometer on the left hand side we have our horn we have our indicators which are regular motorcycle indicators we have our high and low beams and that's about it once again a pretty simple machine in terms of sitting position like i said if we take it off the center stand it is extremely low even at my 175 centimeter height i can flat foot this thing without a problem and being just 100 kilograms it is extremely light you basically nobody is intimidated by this thing it would be perfect for very short riders and very very new to riding people especially if you have a lot of roads a lot a lot of errands to run through the city but let's get it going and i'll explain a bit more about what makes a cub great again no clutch into gear let's go Alrighty, riding a cup for the first time. You have to remember your shift pattern so you don't downshift stupidly. Now, this is quite an interesting little vehicle. A 100 kilogram, 120 cc little two wheel machine. I can see why they are so loved in Asia because they are so small and so light and not having a clutch is actually pretty, pretty relaxing on a motorcycle and the fact that it has a centrifugal clutch that means they can put just four gears and you can have longer gears and thus the engine feels quite a lot more powerful you don't have to be constantly changing gears like, a, like it's going out of fashion like here, second gear, 10 kilometers an hour, just easily on the throttle and the clutch does the work for you. And because it's so light, it doesn't need a lot of torque to get going. What I'm still not used to is riding around one-handed because the vehicle is so light and yet it has 17-inch front wheels but very, very skinny front wheels. It feels extremely darty from side to side. <laughs> But also quite a lot of fun what you do have to get used to is uh, the gearbox honestly if you're used to a normal motorcycle you have to get used to the gearbox because now if I pull up on the lever I actually go to first gear and I'm in second you have to remember always down for up and also you have to take your hand off the throttle when you shift like here And when you downshift, if you don't want to get a severe case of engine brake, you have to blip the throttle. Otherwise, without throttle, as you can see, we have severe engine brake. But when you learn to use the transmission, you can be extremely smooth with it. Now I have to confess, I did do a bit of a practice run before filming this because this is such an idiosyncrasy style of bike to ride. It's hard for the first few kilometers, but if you use your brain and think about it, it's actually quite easy. The gearbox is quite easy. And the vehicle itself... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
quite a lot of punch for just eight horsepower i mean if we get it going first gear quite a lot of poke for just eight horsepower <laughs> it feels actually quite a lot more powerful than it it should okay i can understand why people love these things these are so this is such a blast to ride but then again you're missing the cvt transmission of a scooter which feels even punchier than this plus all the practicality of the scooter i mean this thing has no underseat storage i have no storage here on the floor because there is no floor i have foot pegs So although I can understand the low price, the very low fuel consumption and the ease of use because you actually have a manual gearbox but with an automatic clutch so you don't need to learn to use the clutch. Honestly I would still prefer a scooter. If you can afford a scooter then yes but considering these are much cheaper than scooters, if you can't afford a scooter then I guess the Cub is your only option if you don't care about looking like a proper motorcyclist because as far as I can tell neither scooter people nor motorcycle people actually like Cubs so if you have your scooter crowd that loves their scooters you have your motorcycle crowd that likes their motorcycles but Cub people are in a class of their own if you like a cub you like a cub if you don't like a cub i don't think you're gonna be converted to liking one but then again i can see where people liking cubs come from because yes it feels extremely light extremely maneuverable uh it's cheap to buy cheap to run cheap to maintain everything is cheap about it it gets you from A to B, you don't have the practicality of a scooter, but then again you don't have the costs of a scooter. Lower fuel consumption, parts are a lot cheaper, I don't know, is this a better option? I still prefer my scooter, but then again, like I, like I said, I do see the benefits, like the fact that you have longer gears and you can actually change gear. Look here, well, first gear. You can get some decent speed going in just the first three gears through the city. It feels small, it feels light, it feels very nimble. I mean extremely nimble and it should be through the city a lot easier to maneuver through traffic than a motorcycle. I don't know if it's a lot easier than a scooter. Mm. Uh, hard to say I like it as a toy but honestly I'm still gonna stick to my scooters for city riding because I still have the practicality of storage space that's what this thing is missing it's missing storage space and honestly I carry a lot of stuff while I ride through the city I go shopping I carry my own stuff I would still prefer a scooter rather than a cup but I can see the appeal of these things if you like them you like them if you don't there's nobody gonna convince you to like them but if you like cubs tell me down in the comments below down in the comment section tell me why they are so awesome and why they are better than a motorcycle or a scooter or if you don't like cubs tell me why you don't like them I want to hear from you guys I want to see all kinds of opinions on these things because here in my country you have scooters and motorcycle and that's it these things are a novelty item so i want to hear from the people that have thousands of kilometers on such things why are they so great let me know but until next time guys thank you so very much for watching take care out there and ride safe goodbye <laughs>